So Richard, your area of research you said was in galaxies and in this uh, course so far we've spoken a lot about the celestial emu, the, the dark constellation which uses those dark patches between the stars to actually form the constellation and I just want to know if you could talk to, a little bit on that uh, as to how that relates to our galaxy and the other galaxies that you look at. Absolutely. Well, yes, I spend most of my time looking out of our galaxy to look at other galaxies. The universe is, is full of them, actually. There are as many galaxies in the universe as there are stars uh, that we can see, you know, in the Milky Way. Um, and our perspective from inside the Milky Way, of course, is very different. We don't see our Milky Way from the outside. Uh, and so it actually took us a long time to figure that out. Uh, astronomers couldn't really see the wood for the trees. Uh, because we live in this complex distribution of stars and dust and gas. Um, and so it's actually quite hard to get that perspective. Um, but yes, the, the, the emu in the sky and the Milky Way, uh, when I look at those, what I see is a very, very special view of the disk of a galaxy. Um, and that's a view that we cannot get and will never have for any other galaxy except our own. We're inside it and we're looking out and that band of stars is us looking into the disk and where we see that sort of become empty of stars, that's us looking out of the disk into, into deep space. So this is a really special perspective and there's things that we can measure uh, and, and, and learn about our galaxy that we just can't do in other, in other galaxies. We try, but it's just, it's just too hard. They're just too far away. Um, and yes, yeah, so when I'm out observing the night sky you know, on a walk in a nice location, I'll often look up and think, wow, this is a really, unique view of these things that I look at from a totally different perspective every day as part of my work. So Richard, what are your sort of hopes then going forward with the Australasian Dark Sky Alliance and its sort of mission in protecting the night skies? What do you see as the, as the future in that sort of space? Well, that's a great question. Um, because it's such a complex and interconnected problem, it means it's probably going to have a complex and interconnected solution. Um, but the two main areas that we focus on with the Dark Sky Alliance is educating people. So making people aware of light, of light pollution. It's often something that people haven't even thought of until you point it out and then they'll go, huh, yeah, that's right, that is pollution. You know, that is annoying. I do want to do something about this, but until you have that conversation or make them aware, um, they'll often just not think about it and just take, take it for granted um, as just part of their night environment. That, that is just unchangeable. So getting people aware of, of the issue um, and empowering them that they can actually do something about it, um, that's, that's one of our missions, raising awareness and educating. Longer term, uh, we, we would like to have things uh, modified at uh, a policy level. And part of that would be having uh, light recognized as an actual form of pollution. So we have, or we have rules around sound, we have rules around air quality, but right now there's no or very few rules about treating light as a form of pollution. And I think that would mark a fundamental shift in how we regulate uh, lighting, but also how people approach the problem. Uh, they won't think about just sticking lights everywhere. They'll think, what light do we need? What is the purpose of the light? And usually if you just take it down this path, uh, you find a very natural solution, which is, you know, less impactful for the night environment and actually accomplishes exactly what is needed anyway. Um, so those are kind of the two directions, you know, to educate, advocate, but ultimately get rules in place that, that help us take light pollution seriously. Yeah, and I guess with this conversation that we're having today with our viewers that are, that are viewing this, perhaps we prompted with them this idea that light pollution is something that, that affects us all. So is there something that, that we can do in our everyday lives that can actually help with light pollution? Yes, yes there are. Um, so at an individual level, uh, we can look around our own home where we have control of how we're lighting and we can think about um, how we might be doing that. And that can be something uh, as simple as pulling the curtains closed or closing the blinds at night to stop light coming out of of your house into, the, into your yard environment where animals live and, and need to do things, you know, have their, have their nighttime life. It can be, uh, you know, switching off your outdoor light or putting it on a timer switch or a motion sensor so that you're not illuminating your yard unnecessarily when nobody is there. So there's some simple things around our own homes uh, where we can be a bit more, um, you know, aware of, of how we're using light. Uh, there's a great citizen science project actually called The Globe at Night 
Uh, this has been running now for, for quite a number of years. And uh, it, the great thing is it involves going out and looking at the stars, <laughs> which is always a good experience. Um, but then you actually make a measurement, uh, and that measurement gets collected in a database, a global database, uh, and that lets us build up a picture of, um, of the level of light pollution at your area. So you can look this up, globe at night, it's very simple. Basically, you're, you're trying to find the faintest star that your eye can measure. And so you're using your eye as a measurement device. And that's actually really powerful because, you know, most people uh, can do this. It's not complex. And uh, the human eye uh, has changed very little over a very long time span. So it actually is a very useful baseline for, for how we make this measurement. So I recommend that you, that you look this up, uh, spend an evening out looking at the stars. It's got an app you can look on your phone, upload your number to the database and be part of a, of a great citizen science project. And you, know, you can add to that over the course of the year, um, uh, whenever you like, you know, just capture data. And that's, that's helping us learn about light pollution uh, as the global phenomenon. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, thank you for your, for your time today, Richard. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, I guess now we'll all have to go out tonight and record what's the faintest star that we can see in the night sky. So thank you very much. Yes, thanks.